Hello, hello. Welcome back to the Focus RX channel. I know it has been a while, but we are back and we are absolutely ready to hit the ground running with today's video about ASHP mid year season 2023. If you are a PharmD student looking to land an industry fellowship this year at ASHP mid year, you're in the right place. The whole process of mid year applying for fellowships and landing fellowships is an incredibly chaotic and stressful time for most students. When I was doing this, I wish somebody could just sit me down and let me know exactly what I had to do because the information for this lives in a million different places. Now, before we get into today's video, it is A's HP mid-year fellowship season. And when I was interviewing for fellowships not too long ago, I really wish I had somebody kind of in my corner rooting for me and telling me what I needed to do to stand out amongst the thousands of students that apply for fellowships each year. Year after year, it's getting more competitive and I know it is absolutely chaotic and there are not many materials out there to help you. So if you guys are looking for help in how to stand out with your application, your resume, and throughout the whole fellowship process to actually land a fellowship, I actually opened up 10 one-on-one -on -one coaching spots to help you guys. If you sign up for this, I will be working directly with you to help you with all of your application materials, letters of intent, your resume, helping you organize the whole process, answering any questions you may have, interview prepping with you, and just help you along the way to set you up in the best Best way possible for this fellowship process. My goal is really to help you guys because again, I really wish somebody was there to do this for me. And so if you guys are looking for this kind of help, all the details are in the link that's in the description bar below. Just as an overview, it will include four one-on-one -on -one coaching sessions and again, help with the whole process. And if you have any questions about this coaching process, feel free to reach out via email. And I'm really looking forward to working with some of you guys for this fellowship season. Now let's get into today's video. Today, I'm going to be giving you a little crash course and going over everything you need to know for this fellowship application process. First things first, you need to do your research and familiarize yourself with all the fellowship options out there. Every year I see more and more independent programs and independent fellowships. Although most programs fall into the category of applying through PPS, certain school programs, etc. There are again a lot of individual programs and I've seen many companies kind of butt off and do their own program timeline process, etc. So it's absolutely more important than ever to really look into what options are out there, what the deadlines and timelines are for each of the programs that you want to apply to so that you're not missing out on any opportunity. Now here we're talking strictly about industry fellowships, but at ASHP you can also get clinical and academic specialty fellowships. So if that's something you're interested in, of course, also look into those options. You may be tired of hearing this word networking, but it is incredibly, incredibly important no matter what part of your career you're in, no matter how advanced, it doesn't matter if you're a student, networking is always important. As you're applying to fellowships, you really want to reach out to first and second year current fellows, past fellows, program directors, preceptors, as many people as you can to get in touch with them, set up coffee chats, and understand the process. These are the people who are the closest to it. The first and second year fellows are actively interviewing for the fellowship that you're going to be applying to. So the more you can network with them, the more you can talk to as many fellows as possible, the better it will be for you. I would recommend doing this even way before just ASHP mid-year, the actual conference. We're in October right now, but I suggest doing this as early as possible, even the summer before you're applying to fellowships. The main fellowship application portal opened on October 6th. You still have a lot of time to get your applications in, and I would start networking now. The next thing you need to do to succeed with the fellowship application process is to tailor your resume. If you have not already done so, tailor your resume to the relevant skills and experiences that you've had that will be helpful for the fellowship programs that you will be applying to. When it comes to resumes, one size absolutely does not fit all and each functional area is very, very different. You don't need to tailor your resume for each company or for each role when it comes to fellowships, but you do want to make it personalized to the functional area that you are applying to. Most students just apply to one functional area, but if you're applying to more than one, then again, have two different or three different resumes for each functional area. Side note there, I wouldn't apply to more than two you need to look like you know what you're doing, but that's a completely separate point. 
Next, once you have your applications in, your resume is tailored and you have that submitted, you will start to get interviews. So of course you need to be ready to ace your interviews. Know yourself, know your resume. I know it sounds absolutely counterintuitive because it's you, but trust me, you will get questions on things on your resume. And if you have not taken the time to go over it, think about that experience, think about the projects that you've done. When you're asked questions about it, you won't be able to give the answers, even though you did that work once upon a time. Also prepare for interviews like you normally would. Be ready to discuss experiences, your goals with the fellowship program, your next two to three year goal, and how you can actually contribute to the fellowship. When it comes to these interviews, you need to convince the person that is interviewing you that this program, not just a fellowship, but the program that you are talking about in that interview is exactly what you need. And it's a place where you can make an impact. So you need to make this extremely clear. And again, this all comes from interview prep. You also wanna practice the common interview questions that that will be asked. You'll of course get some of the standard behavioral questions, but some of the standard fellowship questions can differ from just any regular interview. So if you guys are looking for a list of fellowship specific common interview questions, you can actually look at the Focus RX website, which is linked in the description bar below and find a list of these interview questions. I would highly recommend looking at that list and preparing general answers in the format that you prepare, so that you're ready with a few scenarios, a few stories, a few experiences to speak to when you're asked these questions. Next, in your interviews, in your application, in anything that you are sharing about why you want this fellowship, you need to show your passion. It is extremely important and this goes a long way. You really wanna take the time to express your passion for the field, for the industry, for the therapeutic areas that the company that you're interviewing for works in, for the field of pharmacy, for PharmDs in the industry, all of it. If you're not passionate about it and won't show your passion, somebody in the application process will outpassion you. And I truly, truly mean that when it comes to these fellowship interviews and applications, everyone pretty much has the same experience. We all go through pharmacy school. Everyone has rotations. Some people may have an experience in industry or two, but honestly, that doesn't matter at the end of the day. If you can show that you really, really want it and why you want it because of your passion in all these different categories, that will, again, go a very long way. Next, when you are interview prepping, you want to make sure you're coming up with questions to ask. I hope we all know that in interviews, you should have a few questions prepared, but for fellowship interviews, you want to make these as specific as possible. Don't ask questions that can be answered in the brochure, online, or information that you should know. Make these questions extremely, extremely thoughtful and make them personalized to the person you're talking to. So your questions should be a little different for the program director versus the preceptor versus the current fellows. You want to show that you're being thoughtful about why you want this. The questions you're asking are just cookie cutter. And actually one great way to do this is to at least ask one question about something that came up in your interview conversation conversation. This shows that you're not going off of a script. You're actually invested in the conversation that you're having in the moment. You're curious and something that they said sparked a question and therefore you're going to ask it. This is the best way to ask questions. Of course, have some prepared, but if you can make a question or two on the spot, this will give you such a good look. Next, speaking about the overall application timeline, you want to stay extremely organized. Like I mentioned, more than ever, the programs aren't really aligning on their timelines. Some schools and some programs programs like to do their now second round interviews even before going in person at ASHP mid-year. Some people will only do third rounds at mid-year. Some people will do their second rounds there. I know this year the BMS program actually was only recruiting in September. So you really want to keep things straight. You also want to allocate time for any interview prep and resume tweaking. As you're sending out applications, you might find something that you want to tweak and you don't want to be up close to the deadline and not have time to do that. Also between your interviews, Interviews, you want to make sure you have time to implement any feedback, to reflect on your interview yourself and make changes to make your next interview better. So stay super organized. If you guys are looking for an organizer for all the different interviews and checkpoints, I do have a quick spreadsheet on the FocusRx website that can be used to track all of these things and keep yourself organized if that's something you guys are looking for. Lastly, as you're filling out applications, please proofread and edit your applications, your letters of intent, any piece of writing that is going and getting submitted. These fellowship applications are very, very competitive and you don't want to be ruled out just because of a typo on your resume or in your application somewhere. Your resume and any written submission materials are your first impression and that first impression matters so much. So take the time to proofread all your written materials
materials, have people review your resumes. If you guys are interested, I conduct personalized resume reviews, which helps your resume not only with typos and grammatical errors, but to help you really stand out in the application process. Again, if you're interested in that, you can find all of that information at the FocusRx website. But overall, you really want to make sure you're proofreading and editing all of your materials very meticulously. This is your gateway to getting that first interview where you can actually make an impression based on your personality. But until then, make sure all your materials are in tip top shape. Those are my eight points in this little crash course to help you succeed with your fellowship applications and interviews. Keep all of these things in mind. I know there's a lot going on, but all of these things do really matter. And by keeping each of these things in mind, I assure you, you will be organized and you will have a great chance at landing a fellowship. I know it can seem absolutely overwhelming. It is a competitive process, but as long as you know what you're doing, why you're there and what you want, it is very doable to stand out. I really hope this crash course helped you kind of get your head on straight, know what you have to be doing and helped you on this fellowship application journey. If you found these tips valuable, please do give this video a thumbs up, subscribe to the channel if you have not already. And I wish you guys all the best for this fellowship season. Like I mentioned, if you guys are interested in one-on-one -on -one coaching to have somebody in your corner helping you through this application and interview process, you can find all the details down below and I look forward to working with you guys. I was in your spot not too long ago and it is definitely a chaotic process and if I had somebody who was just going to help me with the whole process knew what to do I would definitely take advantage of it and so I really hope that I can help those of you out there who need it good luck again and just remember that you definitely have this in the bag and just keep at it mm -hmm.